Unity for beginners. Part 1. Download Unity. Create a project. Pick 3D. You might be thinking, what is this? What is that? That's okay. Just follow along. In your brain, we'll figure it out. Maybe. Create a game object. Create 3D. Sphere. Now we have a sphere. Game object. What's a game object? It's a Unity thing. That means an object in the game that you can attach components to. What are components? Things you attach to game objects to make them do stuff. Here's a component. Transform. It makes the game object exist in 3D space. Pretty useful. So when do I have to code? When you want custom components to make game objects do custom things. Good. So we have a sphere. What do we want it to do? How about have physics? That's easy. Add a component to the sphere called rigid body. Press play. Now it falls. Physics. Let's stop the falling. Stop the game. Add a ground. Create. Game object. Plane. Uh oh. The sphere is in the ground. Let's move it up. Select the sphere. Press W. Move it up. Press play. Now it falls and hits the ground. Wow. wow. Physics. And in part two, we'll make the sphere interactive. Yeah. Part 2. Interaction. But first, what game are you making? How about this one, where you jump down platforms to kill squares, to get experience, to level up, to kill more squares. Sounds good. But isn't that 2D? Yes. Create a folder. Right click. Create. Folder. Call it scripts. In that folder. Create a script. Right click. Create. C sharp script. Call it player. Open it. Coding time. Oh no, I don't know how to code. Don't worry. Even if you don't understand any of this, you're still getting acquainted, which is good. So what is all this? Our player script, which is a component with some built-in functions like start and update. Delete them. We don't need them. Now what? Movement. Let's check every frame. If the player wants to move, create an integer. Move direction. With this code, it should be negative 1 for moving left and positive 1 for moving right. Let's test it. With debug.log, go back to Unity. Drag and drop the player script onto the sphere. Press play. See this? When I press left, it says negative 1. And when I press right, it says positive 1. Perfect. Now let's make the player actually move. Go back to your script. We need our rigid body. So get it. Now in fixed update, set rigid body velocity x to the input direction. Let's test it. It works, but it's slow. So create a public field move speed. Let's go with 7. Multiply the velocity by the move speed. That's better. Since move speed is public, you can also change it here. But wait, this movement is bad. Why? It isn't smooth. Let's make it smooth. With math, create a float move x. We'll use that for horizontal movement. Now an update, make move x gradually move towards the desired move speed at a rate we'll call acceleration. Let's go with 50. Replace it in fixed update. Go back to unity. Press play. Now the movement is smooth. But wait, it can be even better. Let's make it slow down twice as fast as it speeds up like this. Now that's professional. You can turn down down the acceleration to make it more obvious. We're done. If you don't understand this code, that's okay. Just try changing it and see what happens. Try to have fun with it. In part three, we'll do some graphic stuff. Unity. Part 3. Graphics. No code this time. Just lots of menus. Also, it's optional. Ready? Step 1. Color space. Open Unity. Go to Edit. Project settings. Layer. Other settings. Color space. Linear. What did that do? I'll show you. Gamma. Linear. Gamma. Linear. Gamma. Linear. Got it? Good. Step 2. Camera. Select it. Change projection to orthographic. Now it looks 2D. But wait. Why have a 3D game that looks 2D? I have some plans. Change clear flags to solid color. Change background to black. Step 3. Lighting. Select your directional light, which is like the sun. Change its color to white. Now click. Window. Rendering. Lighting. Click environment. Change source to solid color and set that color to gray to add gray light everywhere. Ambience. Step 4. Post processing. Click window. Package manager. In this drop down, select unity registry. Find post processing. Click install. Select your camera. Add a component. Post process layer. Set its layer to transparent effects and anti-aliasing to FXAA to smooth out edges. Now create a game object. Right click. Create empty. Call it post processing. Set its layer to transparent effects. Add a component. Post process volume. Check is global. Click new profile. File. Add an override color grading. Choose ACES. It makes the colors look cinematic. Add another override. Bloom. Set intensity to 1 and threshold to 1.5. We'll use this later to make things glow. Or if you lower the threshold now, you can make everything glow. Like a 2018 Minecraft shader pack. We're done. That was a lot. Yes, these are all optional steps that aren't usually in beginner tutorials. So if you don't care, don't do it. But if you do care, I'd suggest playing around with these options and also checking out LMH Poly. And in part 4, we'll add jumping. Have you heard of my game, by the way? Unity. Part 4. Jumping. But first, let's make this platform 3D. Delete. Right click. 3D object. Q. Make sure its position is 0, 0, 0. Now press R. Scale it to these numbers. Platform. Now what? Jumping. Open your script. Player. Step 1. Are you pressing jump? That's this code. Step 2. Actually jumping. Create a function. Jump. That sets upward velocity to a float called jump speed. Let's go with 10. Go back to Unity. Press play. It works. I can jump. Actually, I can fly. But wait. Why can I fly? Because we didn't check if we're on the ground. We need a ground check. Let's implement it. Step 1. Layers. Select the platform. Click 
Click layer. Click add layer. Add a layer called ground. Now set platform layer to ground. Step two, ground check. The location where we'll check. Am I touching the ground? Right click, create empty. Call it ground check. Make it a child of player. So wherever the player moves, it moves. We can make it have a little icon like this. Now position it just below the player. Here, stop. Let's do a little investigation. Press play. Click gizmos so we can see our little icon. Uh oh. The ball is rolling. This will mess up our ground check. This was totally unexpected. Stop the game. Select the player. Now under rigid body, click constraints. Freeze rotation XYZ and position Z so it can't roll or move forward and back just in case. Click play. Now it doesn't roll. Good. Step three. Are we on the ground? Open your script. Create a bool. Ground it. This will say yes or no. Are we on the ground? But first, remember that ground check we made? We need it. So get it with a public game object field. Ground check. Then in Unity, drag and drop the ground check object into the player's ground check field. Now let's check if the player is grounded like this. This Unity function says, hey, is there anything in the ground layer in a spherical area with a radius of 0.2 near ground check? If so, I'm on the ground and uh we only want to jump if we press jump and are on the ground go back to unity press play it works we can only jump if on the ground is that it no this jumping is slow and sluggish we want it to be snappy we'll do that with this code in this line we apply way more gravity but we only want to do that midway through the jump or if we're not pressing the jump key let's try it wow snappy unity part five sound so far we've added moving and jumping now what game mechanic no juice oh hey i did a video on that what's juice making it fun to move and jump step one sound acquire or make a jump sound and landing sound i made sine waves with these notes or if you're not an audio engineer try bfxr it generates game sounds for free open unity create a folder call it sounds drag and drop your sounds into the sound folder good now create a game object right click create empty call it audio manager create another object call it jump sound make it a child of audio manager now add a component audio source drag and drop your jump sound into the audio sources audio clip field press play you should hear the jump sound but you don't want to hear the jump sound until you jump so uncheck play on awake now open player time for the unity, unity event, event system. system import it create a unity event on jump and in your jump function invoke on jump what did that do i'll show you go back to unity see this this is our on jump event we can make stuff happen when we jump without code wow click the plus sign drag and drop your jump sound game object here now click the drop down choose audio source play press play now when you jump it plays the jump sound now what about landing go back to your script create a unity event on land now change grounded to a property that says when grounded changes from false to true invoke on land go back to unity select your jump sound duplicate it with control d rename it to land sound drag and drop your landing sound into the audio sources audio clip field now select your player play the land sound on land just like for jump press play it works that's a little juicier but not juicy enough that's why in part six unity's particle system Part 6. Unity's particle system. What's that? The cure for depression. I'm using the old one. Shuriken. What about VFX graph? Open Unity. Let's make dust. Create an empty game object. Call it dust. Make it a child of player. At this position, make another object under it. Called left. Add a component. Particle system. See this? It's particles. But why are they pink? Because there's no material. Click renderer. Choose a material. Sprites default. Disclaimer. I'm not an artist. And VFX could be a whole series. But something is better than nothing. So let's do something. Set rotation to this rotation. Set duration to 0.5. Turn off looping. Set lifetime to 0.3. Click this drop down. Change start speed to random between constants, 1 to 2. Same for start size, so 0.1 to 0.3. Set simulation space to world. Turn off play on awake. Click commission. Set rate to 0. Click this plus. Add a burst. With a count of 5, 5 dust particles. Click shape. Set to cone. With an angle of 15 and radius of 0.1. Check limit velocity over lifetime. Change speed to curve. Select this one. With a max of 2. Set dampen to 1. Check color over lifetime. Select the gradient. Click the top right and turn down alpha to 0. Now press play. Not that one. This one. Over and over. See that? No. Well, it's dust. What did you expect? Now duplicate it. Rename it to right. Right, set Y rotation to 90. Open player. Create two events. On begin moving left and on begin moving right. Then change move X to a property. So if you're on the ground and move X changes from not left to left, invoke on begin moving left. And the same for right. Go back to unity. Select your player. Now when the player begins moving left, we want to play our right dust. So click the plus. Drag and drop your right dust. Click the drop down. Particle system. Play. Do the same for moving right. With the left dust. Now press play. Dust. One more thing. Let's play both dusts when we jump or land. So in on jump and on land, play left and right. Now press play. That's a little juicier, but not juicy enough, which is why in part 7, my favorite effect, screen shake. You can never have too much. Have you heard of my game, by the way? Hitting that stream of doubles on max 300 super max me mix challenge mode. Are you still here? Orsted. Wishlist on Steam. I should probably be saying that. Unity. I'm back. For part 7, screen shake. You can never have too much. Open Unity. Let's install Cinemachine. An amazing system for cameras. Go to Window. Package Manager. Unity Registry. Install Cinemachine. Now create a game object. Right click. Cinemachine. Virtual Camera. This will control the main camera. Virtually. Let's set it up. Set its position to this position. Set Lens to 20. Drag your player. Sphere. Into Follow. Set Aim to Do Nothing. And Body to Framing Transposer. With Screen Y.35 and Soft Zone Height 0.65. Set Noise to Perlin. With Profile 6D. 
D shake. Set frequency to 5. That's it. Now the camera will follow the player while shaking. But we want to control the shake. So we need code. Create a script. Screen shake. Add it to your virtual camera. Open it. Remove. Remove. Import Cinemachine. Get the noise module. Create a float. Shake timer. Now add a shake function. It sets the timer. Then in update, decrease the timer. But not below zero. Then set the shake to the timer. Squared. Times 50. Go back to Unity. In the player's land event. Remember Add your virtual camera and call it shake function. Pick a magnitude. How about two? Press play. Screen, Screen shake. shake. Is this too much? You can never have too much. Well, well, let's decrease it to 0.3, just for fun. Is it fun to move now? Yes. Now we can make the rest of the game. Unity for beginners. Part 8. How to add double jump. Open your player. Script. Recap. Is the player on the ground? Yes. It can jump. Now let's add has double jumped. Time for a quiz. If Ben is looking at Sarah and a train is traveling backwards, but Sarah has 63 apples and Ben presses jump, can he jump? Well, if he's on the ground, yes. But also, if he isn't on the ground but hasn't pressed double jump, then also yes. But now he has pressed double jump. One more thing. When the player leaves the ground, reset has double jumped to false. That's it. It works. Double jump. Join Discord by the